monument to the temporal glory of the Caesars forms a backdrop as the body of Pope Pius XII is born to St. Basilica. A man of humble spirit and indomitable will, Pope Pius guided the spiritual life of nearly a half a billion Catholics during the 19 years of his reign. Assuming the throne in the critical year of 1939, he was acutely aware of the agonies of the age. Rock-like, he was the very symbol of the Christian stand against the sweep of communist atheism. For three days, cardinal and peasant alike add their prayers for this great soul as he lies in state before final internment. Eugenio Pacelli, his great work done, will rest in a crypt beneath the Bernini altar, not far from the grave of St. Peter, the grave discovered during his reign in 1950. In order of their seniority, the cardinals invoke a final blessing. Cardinal Roncalli, destined to be the next pope, adds his blessing, and the solemn procession to the vault proceeds. Final tribute to the pontiff and to the man, Pope Pius XII, fountainhead of Christian strength in an age of crisis. Within 18 days of a pope's death, the College of Cardinals must meet to choose his successor. To name the 262nd pope, 51 cardinals, the normal complement is 70, meet in solemn conclave with age-old rites. They assemble in the Sistine Chapel, which is completely sealed off from the outer world. Such was the scene as the cardinals prayed for divine guidance in choosing one of their number who must be elected by two-thirds of the vote, plus one. After each ballot, the votes are burned, with straw added to the paper tallies when the vote is successful. The straw produces white smoke to proclaim that a new pope has been named as Vicar of Christ. Speculation is rife as to whom will be chosen, for there is no one cardinal favored. All eyes are on the chimney that will bring the first news. On the third day after 10 inconclusive ballots comes puff after puff of white smoke. A new pope. sacred moment as the man who takes the name of John the 23rd gives the papal blessing of Orbi et Orbi to Rome and the world. The son of an impoverished Italian father becomes at 77 supreme spiritual leader. Coronation Day comes just a week later. Again, St. Peter's Square is thronged with the faithful who wait patiently for hours to witness the actual coronation and to receive the papal blessing in a ceremony unchanged through the ages. With the honor guard at attention, Pope John XXIII makes his first formal appearance. The five hour long ceremonies begin as he is borne aloft on the Sedia Gestatoria or portable throne. The mystic symbolism and spiritual significance of the religious rites are interwoven with all the pomp and magnificence of the church. The cardinals, 200 bishops and archbishops, along with clericals of humble order, take part in the solemn procession to the basilica. The Sistine Choir, voices raised to God, accompanies the rites. Present are the diplomatic corps and representatives of all governments of the free world.
On his portable throne, covered by the baldacchino or canopy, the Pope is borne to the chapel of St. Gregory. Here, before a solemn pontifical mass begins, he ascends a throne in the chapel to receive the cardinals. Here in the chapel, the Sacred College of Cardinals expresses obedience to the Pope, and he extends his papal blessing. Then the Pope is vested with the garments that he will wear during solemn mass, the same pontifical mass that is being celebrated throughout the world. Now the patience of the crowd is to be rewarded as the Pope, flanked by the flabelli or plumed papal fans, is borne through the basilica to the outer balcony of St. Peter's. Here in full view of the crowd, the triple crown will be placed upon his head. The Pope comes forward to the balcony for the final act that marks him as the Vicar of Christ and Supreme Shepherd of Catholics throughout the world, Pope John XXIII. The Tri-Regnum, the Triple Crown of Papal Supremacy, is placed solemnly on the Pope's brow as the Lord's Prayer, simplest and most magnificent prayer of all, is intoned. Christendom has a new Pope, Emotion reaches deeply into the hearts of all as they kneel before the man who faces a critical reign with sublime faith. Thus begins the rule of Pope John XXIII, 262nd Pope of the Roman Catholic Church. With divine guidance may he rule his flock wisely and well to be a worthy successor to St. Peter.